Hello, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. On today's episode, we are focusing on love. And that's so important with Valentine's right around the corner and everything. That's amazing. And I'm going to just throw this in here. Now, listen, if you have any questions for our guests today on the topic of love um, or you want to share a story, you can always call us at 833-780-HOPE. And we would love to talk to you. So that number again is 833-780-HOPE, which is, I think, 4673. So, but today um, we have Melissa Finley with us and I'm so excited. I love, just love this topic of love and everybody needs it in the world. So it's important. So I welcome you to our show and everything. But before we get started, I just want to ask you one quick question. Are you game for that? I'm game for that. Thank you for having okay. me. Game. Oh, thank you. So my question for you is out of the past 15 years, how many weddings have you been to? Past 15 years. You know, that's like quite a long time. <laughs> I know. I just want to get those numbers. <laughs> I have probably been to, let's see, I want to say eight. Eight. Okay. So um, when you go into like a ceremony and you're the guest, what is it that thing you have to sign before the ceremony starts? The sign before the ceremony is a good old guest book. Yay! Okay, so one of our big sponsors here at Keep Up Alive is lifeonrecord.com. And what they do is they have a beautiful vintage rotary phone there. So your guests can come in, pick up the phone, and leave a message. Oh. But this is so fun because it's like the gift of voice you know, for the couples and everything. So you can leave a one minute, five minute conversation piece for them. Congratulations on your wedding. But right next to it is a QR code that your guests can take out their phone. They can scan it and they can call from their own mobile device also. So um, after all these messages get collected, they burn it on a 12 inch vinyl record or they have a keepsake speaker that they use, which I always call the little boom box. That's my trademark on it. Um, but you can leave those messages. They get a toll-free number for one year. And I was like, hint, hint. If it's one, you know, one year timing right before that one year anniversary, call back and say happy anniversary and get those messages on there too. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, you know, if I ever got married again, I think I, well, I don't think I know I'm going with life on record. I want to have that vintage phone and hear those wonderful messages and everything. So in their plans, they only start at $99. What a great deal. I mean, it's wonderful. So Unfortunately, you don't get to keep the phone, but you get to keep the toll free <laughs> number. <laughs> and it's just a joyous thing. Find out more information at www.lifeonrecord.com. All right. That's Love such a neat idea, idea, really. I'm so excited. <laughs> so tell us, who is Melissa? I am a certified transformational and mastery coach that specializes in love. I um, focus on dating for single women um, who want to intentionally date and stop wasting time and find the right connection. Um, my background story is like I came from nursing because I love people, but I needed something different to help people. So this is why I did a nice corner turn on to coaching because it's another amazing way to help people without being in the hospital system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally understand that. Love and health go together, by the way. <laughs> yes, it, it's like, it is part of it, right? It's an mm -hmm. a mental health to be, I, I like, it's actually one of my mission statements that love is a fundamental human need. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And it's, it gets harder. Actually, 
I'm going to be 46 soon, but you know, trying to date again, it's been challenging, like really challenging. So, you know, there's like new terms, like what ghosting, I was like, what's ghosting? Am I getting this old? Like, are there emojis now for dating? And yes, there is. Right. I got to learn all this. <laughs> Yes, there's definitely lingo and it's always new lingo. But the good thing about that is most of the time, whenever, if you're like dating within your age bracket, you're going to be in the same similar boat. So you're not going to be having some person being thrown out lingo at you like you're 15 or 20. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even think I could honestly follow that lingo. <laughs> it would be hard to, you know, um, you know, where do you find the right person to meet is my question always. Like, I was like, is it at the grocery store? Is it at church? Is it at a bar? Is it, you know, it's just, where do you go on these dating sites like Match and Bumble and stuff like that? You know, our time, I'm not there yet though. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, and now Facebook has a date dating. So yeah, definitely. Yes. So it's... There's so many options. And I think that's what's nice about it because you can really find what feels good for you. Right. Yeah, like, definitely. If you want to go find somebody at church, there's normally church groups and things that you can do afterwards with that. That is really nice to go that way. Or if you want to use the apps, I'm big. Actually, I just did a um, podcast not too long ago and we talked about dating apps and there's actually safety things that you can actually follow with those apps because we talked about scamming, but that they have background checks on some of these anyway apps now for like safety reasons, because I'm really big advocate, especially for us women on the safety end of things for dating. Yep. I agree. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It feels like you get tricked. Yeah. I've been tricked a few times. So yeah. And AI is out there very now. Important. So you got yeah. it's, it's like a little, it's a little scary what AI can do. Yep. It sure is. It sure is. So yeah, of course you can see in my eyes, I, I have stories. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. And I actually found, I did find my husband online. Oh, cool. Yeah. cool. I found him on Tinder of all things. It was not um, to be expected to be a hundred percent honest. I loved using hinge and bumble, but when I was like kind of tired of talking to people, but just wanted to browse I'd go on tinder and just swipe left it's a definitely guilty pleasure I had back then um but he actually super liked me he had a lot of common interests and I'm like oh boy let's just yeah. give it a try we know tinder's not very <laughs> often great for some the of word this. tender people go what tender <laughs> no it's not notorious but it happens and we like we feel like uh, we keep on talking like we should have a uh, tinder endorse us and so we yeah. found love that way <laughs> well you know to throw this out there i just met somebody uh i think we have five common interests and i was like i'm gonna take a chance but he was wearing a dallas cowboys jersey in his profile and i was like i'm an eagles fan how is this gonna work out <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding um our, actually we went on a first date found him through facebook and um we decided to wear jerseys so he wore his dallas cowboys i wore my eagles and we showed the whole bar we got along <laughs> so, if we do coexist, we can find each other and be happy so yeah <laughs> That is so, awesome. That sounds yeah, like so, so much fun. What made you guys come to that decision to do that? Well, um, he brought it up, I believe. And I think he was just being a little smart butt with me. And he said, I'm going to wear my Cowboys jersey. And I was like, well, okay, I'm putting the Eagles on. So we talk about now, what did we do for karaoke? And he was like, well, you know, Every Friday we go, he's like, do a gender song. Like you sing a guy and I sing a girl song. And I think that's our next time. So I don't know if that's going to be a new trend for us when we go to karaoke. But, you know, 
but it was awesome because one of the things I learned about me this year was I love to dance and he just, he did karaoke. He pulled me out and danced with me. And I was like, good. <laughs> now I got to see if he'll watch soap operas with me and then we're good. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it's that, you know, last year it was about self-love, finding out who I am crying to date I would my wall would come a little bit down but you know there was I think three people you know I dated that I was like high hopes and then it just got so my guard is still up even though I found my perfect match but I'm just praying I leave it in faith in God to lead the way right now so but I mean this is what you do for a living so I want to hear all the people you've helped and everything. <laughs> so. It's so fun. It's so fun because I think we all start with that, especially, you know, dating scary. It can be really like, I think outside, like you're, um, well, I don't know. It depends who, where you are in life. If you're just having a great time, you just want to like not be serious. Well, even then it still can be a little wonky because we can meet some interesting people out there um yeah. but it's like getting through like I feel like we go through dating just bumbling around like okay well my friend says like this works or this person my parents say this work it just depends like you get advice from everybody who's really not a professional and I just like love people finding themselves one because that's what you need to do right as you said you took like time yeah. to like do self care, love, like learning yourself more and that's how you can honestly bring your best self and know what you want in the dating world. And once mm -hmm. you have like, like teach like this foundation, once you have a great foundation down, it's easy to start setting like better boundaries for ourselves because we know exactly what we want without being too rigid and moving through that more fluid, being able to be a little more vulnerable, which can be hard. But if you have that good solid, this is me, this is my authentic self. And I wanna have a connection with somebody who loves my authentic self then I'm going to give you what I have and I'm going to stand by it. And yeah, it's just like, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was like, no, that's a hundred percent. Yeah. So I love that. I can see caring on the other side as much as me. So that brings people together. You have to, you know, I think if somebody has compliments they should tell the other person what those compliments are. So that helps out when you're dating and everything and learning about people and everything. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, <laughs> it's just like, it's like, that's absolutely it. And being curious yeah. about each other. Like, that's like another thing with communication. Like we also are not as a human, very taught very well how to communicate to each other and like look at things a little mm -hmm. bit differently. I still have to remind myself to this date with my husband. Okay. The way he sees things is a little bit different. And I need to try to understand that because my lens isn't the only lens. And this is why we work on that communication. And that yeah. still can work. That still works through dating and getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. Um, which is like, it's just like, um, I saw like the had like a couple, like was conversations. She's like, went out with this guy. And, um, she loves dogs. She has two dogs. He doesn't mm -hmm. have any dogs. He hates them. Oh, he hates them. Okay. Yeah. So it was awkward for a minute. She said like the date got awkward. She's like, yeah, I love dogs. He's like, well, I hate them. And she's all like, what the heck? Like anybody who doesn't like a dog, right? You don't trust them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's what dog owners can be. But to find out, she decided to ask, so what is it about it? Well, he was attacked as a child. And so he has a big fear of dogs but she almost shut down the date because she's like well if you don't but yeah. with a little work of like trying to figure out who people are she got to have a little more connection actually with this person yep definitely really so yeah you just gotta listen to what they say i learned patience and listen listening more to somebody is important um talking communication oh my gosh that is so important. Don't shut down. Don't go quiet. You know, that's, I think where some people can act, actually, like I call myself a free spirit. I want to learn about something new about that person, you know, or ask them, how was your day? You know, 
and then listen to what they have to say. And then, you know, hopefully you get a chance <laughs> to talk, but yeah, say, so, okay, well, my day was productive. This is what I did. This is what I learned and everything. So, but yeah, definitely. Yes. We all want to be heard and have that connection when it really comes down to it. Yeah. Being they heard, are very important. <laughs> <laughs> it gives us hope yes <laughs> so, definitely and that's what we guess and then it's just like how we can potentially grow and I just like yeah. love I just I mean I love love but <laughs> that's so yeah that's one of the things you know growing up I wanted to be a wedding planner and I followed my dreams I'm a certified wedding planner but getting to see our everybody else be you know get married and I'm a photographer. So I do more photography than everything. So yeah, I use my lens to capture that moment and it's just beautiful. You feel their joy, their happiness, positive vibes coming out when they get married and everything, which is cool. So um, yeah, I was going to say, um, our photographer, we got married twice, my husband and I, um, uh -huh. our first set, our first photographer, it was in Montana. My family's from Montana. Okay. The capturing of us was so amazing. I still, and I think I will for the rest of my life, love looking at our pictures because you can really see that. So I appreciate that capturing also. And I'm sure, of course, every bride and groom or every husband and wife that can reflect on that. That is like yeah. such a, that's like the splurge area, I think, photographer is like just yeah. to get those moments. Because our second wedding, it wasn't, it was more, um, just, I don't know. It just wasn't that way. And so we have great pictures, but they, they don't have that moment that the first one did. That first one did. Yeah. So I actually did a photo shoot at a nursing home. Oh. Um, I believe they were 99 and 95. And that guy, the pastor minister that was there compared their love like fine wine I was like I've never bawled at a wedding but this was like a second marriage for them too and I cried like a baby I was like oh my gosh that is so sweet <laughs> so you know I think you know in dating what was it you know 51st States movie I, there was another movie and I know Vince Vaughn was in it and maybe Reese, but they always made their, like their connection was a date. It wasn't train wreck. Um, I'm like, I know. And I was thinking wedding crashers, but that's not it either. Um, no, I forgot. But yeah, I was like, I want to have every time I see somebody not to go out and spend a lot of money, but look at it as a first date, you know, show you that you're interested and stuff. So, and believing, um, you know, I think journaling is fun with somebody to learn about them too. And you write it down in the book and everything It's something fun to do. And then also I am looking into this right now, but there's games for couples to, yes, play to get to know each other. Date yeah. night. I think it's called date night. There's a few of them out there. I think we have couple something. Um, we got it. We actually just picked it up like from a Target, and we play that, which is so much fun. And we also even do um, gratitude dates. Nice gratitude writing journals. Yeah, I have. Well, we just do like, like we'll go out and tell each other like, hey, I've been really grateful the last couple of weeks because you've picked up this because I've been stressed and I appreciate it and just like just like giving each other the gratitude that we feel. That we don't always vocalize yeah. sometimes when we're super busy. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So that I'm going to keep that in mind too. That's really good. Okay. Tell us all your tips. <laughs> all the tips. Okay. So we kind of covered some of that. Um, so one is definitely getting to know yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to know your values. You need to know your goals and your desires in life. Because that is important to find that partner who can align with that. Now, can you find your partner, even though you're going through that, you know, it's like, yeah. how does the brain work on that? Because you can be like, I'm finding myself, but it feels like the universe lined up and I met somebody, but I'm still learning. Can I give it a try and still go through that process? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You can still do that. You just have to like be like, we'll see how they are with it. Right. With the process too. I think as long as you're open and honest about it and how they mm-hmm. handle, like if they are good and want to move forward with that, then that's a good fit. Right. Like, Hey, I'm still just yeah. trying to figure out some things in life. And they're like, okay, I can either wait. This is what I really want in life. And we'll see if we can match that up or I'm open to hearing more from you like that is a really good one that's a really good person that shows that maturity that's willing to be like yes I want to see where things go with you and I'm supporting you finding yourself too and I like and that may or may not work in the long run we know that but we know that with any relationship right we can never predict Mm -hmm. what's going to happen in 10 20 by you you know any years or months or something like that but I think it's just but you still have to be true to yourself number one yeah definitely so pretty open to, I feel to like going with that with you. mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, um, for example, you know, me go through, I met somebody and, you know, I think we, we did both decide we want to see where this goes. No more dating apps, no more random trying to talk to other people and stuff. And that makes you feel secure. Yes. It's that security that you're looking for and trust as you're learning somebody. So that's important too. Um, you know, and good for when, you for having that conversation. Like a lot of people oh, yeah. get like, oh, I don't want to approach that right away. And then ends up being this like fear of like, are they seeing other people? So that is amazing. Yes. One, that's all right. I just had to compliment you on that. Yeah, I did a podcast and it's called Dating 101 and I talked about ghosting and that was something very important. I I told him on the first date, I'm honest, I will tell you right away and I'm not going to do it in the text. I will tell you to your face, you know, I I think this is going to work out. If you wanted to take me out again, definitely, you know, this is going to be a move forward and, you know, that has actually helped me in the dating field. I know there's other people that will just get on a text and say, yeah, it's not going to work out and everything. Now, people who know me know I have health issues, but that always scares me too, because in what I'm looking for is I need somebody to be by my side too, and know that I'm a fighter, that I'm a warrior. And I'm going to get through this. You know, you could throw anything at me health wise and my shield goes up and goes bing, bing, bing. It's gone, you know. So, but I think that's been a decision maker a lot of time or with me doing podcasts. And at the time I had a full time job, too. And then I had football. It was like, where do you find time to date? Well, if you're special enough to me, I am going to find the time because I'm flexible at the same time. You have to ask those questions and not just assume from a person that, oh, yeah, you're just too busy for me. So, you know, I think honesty and being loyal is a really good way to go. So I love that. I love that. Listen to just like the growth you shared. Thank you, by the way, for sharing that. That was just like amazing. And it looks like so far, keep these fingers crossed. It's like helping with this. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I love when he texts me. Um, I love that, you know, because he's thinking of me. It tells me, you know, and I'm just like, you know, and I'm proud of him for all of his accomplishments. That's the other thing. And I made sure I told him that, you know, it's like, I'm so proud of you because you're doing this and that. And I think this whole other side of me came open, you know, he's a musician and I go, well, my background is in marketing and sales and I'm creative and I'm a photographer. Uh, my downtime, I I want to help promote you, you know, so I'm trying to help do that for him at this time, but I want to make it perfect. (laughs) So This sounds wonderful so far, Nadine. I love this. I love this for you. I just like, I really do hope that this continues to move forward the way you would like it. I know. I know. So I want to hear your advice um, when two people meet. Mm -hmm. for the first time and it doesn't feel right 
what do they do? I feel that um, if two people meet and it doesn't feel right, I feel like that should be an on it like it should be an honest conversation there at the end of the date. Um, Cause I feel like you have to give it sometimes we get those nerves, but if, unless there's like a big red flag in your gut, I'm a big advocate for um, listening to your gut and it feels like you need to get out. You need to do, you need to take care of yourself first, but yeah. if it just doesn't feel like it's going right, it's just a nice, like, Hey, it was, thank you for taking the time to meet with me. I just don't feel like this is the best like alignment for us. And I think that's like the best way to approach it at the end. And there's no more questions. There's no more like, well, you know, well that you shouldn't, have, you know, you should give me a chance or something like that. You don't have to do that. But like, you just like, this is all I want to do. I appreciate your time. It was great. Yeah. And move on. Yeah, so definitely. Like, and have, especially like, if they bought a meal, say, thank you. It was appreciated. And, you know, talking to somebody, I want to keep them as a friend, you know, you can okay. still talk to me as a friend, you mm -hmm. know, and everything and go from there. So, um, definitely, but I've also seen where there's times people mess up or like, I'm going to give you this sample. I got asked on a lunch date and I stupidly said, I have a podcast. <laughs> so I guess this person was watching one of the shows and I bet it was Dating 101. Um, but during our day at the very end, he goes, how do I get back with my ex-wife? And I was like, okay, breathe, Nady, breathe. I didn't get upset or mad. And I go, let's talk about this. What happened? What can you do? You know, these are steps that you can take. So I helped him as a friend. You know, I wasn't going to be that person who just says, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that on the first date and blah, blah, blah. You know, that wasn't my take. But, you know, there's, you know, let, let's be real. There's people that are still married on dating sites. Yes. You know, and that's scary. I mean, I think people will take the name, the full name if they got it and look at their profiles and stuff. And I had another podcast we said, I'm not dating anybody unless you have your decree with you and you do the full background and then we'll move forward. <laughs> so, but, you know, having trust and faith in somebody and talking to them, you know, I don't ever want to ask all that stuff for me, uh, for, but I've burned been burned both of the times, you know, so. Absolutely. And I, I, I love that you had that conversation. That's very, I don't know, everybody definitely would have reacted the same way. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be like, well, not even just like to, just to go on and actually be kind enough to help. That was very kind. Yeah. Um, and those things do happen. As you said, those things like moon, I think it's just like, again, just having some of those conversations and just being true to yourself. You have to be true to yourself and in this like moment, whatever that may be of like, mm -hmm. yes, no, whatever. I got to move on. Yeah. I climbed enough to help you. Or we, no, they're just like, uh, that's what I, it's sometimes hard though in the beginning. And I get that. And we all yeah. mess up and we all just have our moments and it's, we have to remind ourselves to give ourselves the grace to, to have those moments. Like that. Give yourself grace. Yeah. No, no, well, it's funny. Grace. My doctor said, find grace to me for my health uh, concerned. And it really stuck with me. And I'm like, okay, I'll find grace. And then it leads me to Chevy Chase. Great. I know her, you know, I'm like, but you know, find grace in relationships too, you know, that's very important. So yeah, yeah two, people, is... two people that are trying to come together with the best, most of the time, the best intents, right? We can't ever say your things a hundred, but we try to come together with our best intents and our best, sometimes our best foot forward, sometimes not our best foot forward. And we have yeah. to remember that. No, there's no perfection. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you can be sad, I guess, if it didn't work out and you're the person who had to say it like I had to tell somebody it's not gonna work but I had a good cry right after like that was hard for me my heart hurts because it didn't work out I tried and you know I don't know how they would ever take that but 
it does hurt the other person. I think people really need to understand that it's not an easy thing to do, but you're being honest and true to yourself. And why try and say, oh, maybe I can change them. You know, you can't change people. And, you know, they're going to be who they are. You've got to accept who they are. And that's how you find the one, too. And it may take time, time management. <laughs> but be patient. It will come. <laughs> so, Twofold, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Time, but also be patient. <laughs> yeah. So um, I want to go back to... You know, recently, um, I, I met somebody a while back and I didn't know, but I took the initiative to be, what are you doing? Because it was a while, you know, they, they worked somewhere where they couldn't even ask for a date and stuff like that. But I took that initiative and said, Hey, well, if you're not doing anything, I'm going to be here, you know, and, you know, come. And they're like, yes you know, which was great. So what do you do if you meet a shy person or, you know, they're just quiet all the time, but you, you, there's a connection that you can see. How do you handle that? I think as you just said, like the asking, like that, that's like one of these like societal norms that I like, I do some like dating role busting. And I feel like the woman ha or the man happened to ask the woman out doesn't have to be the way it is. If you feel like there's connection, some people are more shy and you want to just go ahead and give it, go ahead and give it. It's just like the same thing of like, I want to go ahead and message them or text them instead of waiting or something, do it. It's natural. It's authentic and do it. Yeah. Don't like, if you know, you want to talk to that person and haven't wrote you yet, take that first initiative you know, see, you know, um, and if you're on the phone with them, finally, after a long day, you know, you can ask questions and just be like, be honest, are we still on the same page, you know, or did your feelings change? Because the grass is greener on the other side. I look at, are they using their cell phone on a date? Are they going to the bathroom more? Are they, da, 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 you know, what are they doing? Um, sometimes like one of them told me, oh, it's about a job and da, 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 da. But no, it was about other women at the time and just setting up different times to go visit them. And Red that was really <laughs> hurtful. Yeah, I learned that later on. And I was like, whoa, I can't believe this happened. You know, so you just... You never know what you're going to get, but have those conversations if you feel like something's off. Yeah, it's going back to trusting your gut. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, um, I will say, honestly, I give different scenarios all the time. If you know, and you were meeting somebody and they go out to do different things in the evening, whether it's karaoke or playing pool or something like, it's okay to ask what, what are you doing tonight? You know, I know you're passing the bar. Are you going to be stopping at the bar because you have friends there? There has to be an understanding because people still do a lot of things. You shouldn't have to change that, but you know, that's it. That's a hard one for me. Um, how do how do you go about that? So, are you talking like, or, um, just for clarification, like them just doing other things outside of the dating, like stopping by the bar and seeing the buddies, or not dating? So, like, if it was karaoke, they love doing it. They have mm -hmm. made new friends. They, they you know, they want to see their new friends. Um, or if it was like open mic or bingo or something they were doing that it, they already okay. had this okay. in their schedules, you know, um, I don't think you would say, no, you have to quit. I'm not that kind of person. You never do that. So I think having an understanding and being like, oh, maybe one day I can go with you and see this, you know, 
Yes, yes, that's exactly absolutely because one, we don't want to change somebody again. And if this is like something they really look forward to, it's just like if we wouldn't want to hang out with our girls and go have brunch or go shopping, like you wouldn't expect somebody to take that away from us either. And um, it depends. Like, is it just them and their, you know, is it this time that they need with their their guy friends? Like, do they need this bonding time with them? Then that's just left. It has to be either an acceptance or if you can't accept that, then that's like something you have to look at in yourself. If this can be a situation for you, whatever the reason may yeah. be. Um, yeah, definitely. Or if it is something like karaoke and like, Hey, yeah, I would love to go one time. If they were ever open to that, you always can throw that out and see how that works yeah. out. Yeah. And then I learned what are their hobbies? What are their interests? If they like going to a museum going, you know, antique shopping or car racing, like NASCAR, I, you put the effort out for someone you like, you know, you're going to walk around, you know, antique shopping and look, I actually had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> but I was like looking for turtles. I was like, I need to find a turtle in here because sea turtles are my favorite. But, you know, it's just one of those things when you put effort you know in your heart that you really want to see where this is going, which is amazing. So um, have you, again. Oh, sorry. I piece again, I don't know if yeah. you heard of the trend from a few months ago, the bird, the bird trend where the girl was like, look at that bird. It's really neat. And to use that to be like, to see if that person would actually be like, look at it with you to have that connection. Yeah. And if they didn't, it was like a red flag, which there's a lot of truth behind it. Um, Gottman, I like using Gottman's Institute stuff. And then they call it a bid for connection. And if you're trying to do a bid for connection, like something like that, and they're not giving it to you, you got to look at that. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, talking at times, you need to have time for the person you like to talk and tell about the day be a good listener, but you need some time to talk also, and they need to be a good listener. So, you know, I have always test people. Did, did you hear what I, I said? And <laughs> yeah, and they can repeat it right back. And that's like, wow, okay. You know, so I, I guess it's a part of not being heard, you know, oh, I, I was thinking about something else, you know, that's a red flag to me. And, you know, it's just like, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> so, yeah. um, as far as dating, um, with children, how many people have you helped with that? Because that's always a tough subject, you know, to go in, you know, you want to spend time with the person you like, but how do you do it with a child? You know, and that's again, everybody's preference. Like, um, I feel like you have to think big and hard about bringing these people into your children's lives. And I feel that some people feel that they want to do it sooner than others and others want to wait longer. And I feel like that's just a calm. You have to have that conversation. Like, Hey, I have these kids or kid. And I just like, like I have a, um, I have a lady that she, she's a single mom. So her choices are like, I don't really have a whole lot of money for a babysitter one. So I can't do that a lot. So she wasn't really like, she wanted to give it a try. And so she was able to get a sitter for a couple times. And then they did something like go to a playground together. So it wasn't like a yeah. intimate meeting so they could still meet. So she could still get to know him and then kind of, so it really also depends on circumstances. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. And then um, I love when you're dating and somebody has a dog. Okay. I had to laugh at this one. Well, I had to get home for my dog. <laughs> I got to take it for a walk. But why can't you just say you're not interested? <laughs> like <laughs> to me, I was like, your dog is the call dog. Like, <laughs> okay, we're going to just get out of this with a dog excuse. You know, if I had a rabbit, oh, I had to go home and walk my rabbit. <laughs> that just sounds weird. But for some people, that's a legit, I have a very good friend who she's clockwork home every four hours to walk her dog. 
Okay. She will stop everything that we're doing or she makes sure she plans. Like, I know we're all going to hang out a little bit longer, but I got to go home and walk my dog. So some people are very, like, very particular about getting to their dogs. I feel like, um, especially uh, millennials, they're very, <laughs> we're very big dog lovers and they're like children. So it's actually kind of um, interesting how people are with their dogs. Yeah. I had one person, you know, it was great because we were dating and, but the walks in the cold weather, and it wasn't like a small walk. It was like around a whole complex, it felt like. And I was just like, oh, 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 I'm so cold in the winter. And I'm like, I can't handle this. My body can't handle this. <laughs> so I call it like the death walk of cold air. <laughs> I'd rather be by a fireplace just sitting down or something. <laughs> so. But you know, I did go no. on those walks. I showed an attempt. Okay. Well, I was like, why isn't your dog going to the bathroom yet? <laughs> so <laughs> just wanted that nice little walk and everything. So, but you know, um, I have so many questions for you. My goodness, because I love this topic. And and you know, I love this topic. People out there, they can tense up, um, you know getting to know people on a level and I talk about the bar because I'm at karaoke and that's where I usually am um if you're drinking a lot and you know in yourself like I don't want to meet somebody right now but it tends to happen how can you take yourself feeling tipsy or drunk and, you know, if they say, oh, come back with me. I've always been the one, oh, no, that's not happening. <laughs> I'll talk to you. We can exchange numbers and texts and see. But, you know, for me, I always wanted to know, not under the influence of alcohol, but there's, you know, people have found love under the influence of alcohol. So Absolutely. have you dealt with both of those? The, the, with the connection of finding somebody? Well, yes, yeah. yes, 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 absolutely. I feel like there's like, oh, there, there's two, we have to have, okay, there's chemistry, right? Yeah. You have to have some chemistry. It's not everything, obviously. You have to have um, connection to with like your values and everything else. But we do have to have some sort of chemistry. And when you meet people out, well, you don't even have to be, drinking per se, but you have chemistry with some people, right? There's like that connections that you can have with people with or without. So I think that's yeah. completely successful either way. It's just sometimes you're a little more liberated, I guess, if you want to call it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't drink anymore. I, if I go, I get a Coca-Cola and I'm fine, but sit in the people around me like when they're drinking a lot I was like oh gosh no I'm actually happy that I'm just drinking Coca-Cola <laughs> I was like ah, oh, because I love my Behringer wine but oh, not anymore so I'm just like I enjoy singing I enjoy hanging out with friends I made new friends and stuff so it's good and you know those are things um also, what are some like stories, fun stories where you've helped couples? Fun stories. Well, I haven't like per se helped couples because I mainly deal yeah. with the singletons. Um, but I do have like a fun, I do like to tell this a success story because it's just like, I don't know, it's just neat to me because she um, is an introverted human and she felt that she needed to put herself out as an extrovert because that's what everybody seemed to, she thought, perceived that preferred. So she would go out and then be like, try to be like, yeah, I like doing all these things and doing, and then things would fizzle out because once she would be like burnt out from trying to do all these things. And then the guys would kind of be like, I thought you wanted to do all these things. So it didn't like work out that way. And so mm -hmm. like, we worked on embracing her authentic self and um, she loves her backyard. She cultivates it. She has flowers. She has a bird bath music. Like she has got her sanctuary and she loves to grab a book and hang out. And she found a gentleman who loves to grab a book and sit by his fireplace. 
in the evening nice. and they connected and then she's like there's yeah it's so cute now they just like have they, they don't rarely ever go out because they're just very happy and they hang out at home reading their books in the day they'll go outside in the back and put around in the yard and then at night you know they'll like hang around their fireplace i freaking love it like it's just like oh, so cool. <laughs> yeah definitely that is so meant to be so oh my gosh you know you have the people who like her you know they like to do that or they throw themselves into work um so and then you have the free spirits out there in the world that are like oh you know spontaneous and let's go do this and go do that you know um or you have people like me I'm a little bit spontaneous I don't like it because I'm an event planner and I like details what what are we doing this week and my brother always calls me out on Thanksgiving so is Thanksgiving next year already planned I'm like yeah pretty much (laughs) (laughs) you know I've just always been that planner person but um you have so many different personalities out there. So helping the single people, you know, really find themselves and what to look for. Um, I, is it more online basis that they're meeting each other or just places? I, I feel like there's a lot more online um, but there are people want to meet more organically. It's just harder for them. And I'm like, well, I feel like, and then I'm like, an online life, I feel like you could do a little bit more filtering. And so I'm like, well, if you're already doing it, you can at least filter. Like, do we have, religion's important to some people, right? And do we have the same religion? Like some of the apps have that on there. Like you can already be like, okay, it's so important to me that it's actually a deal breaker and that can be okay. Yeah, definitely. So I know, like for me, I go to church every Sunday and my son really likes church a lot. So he has some goals at church he wants to meet, but I don't want to ever call it a deal breaker. Would I be sad that somebody didn't come with me? Yeah, it would be sad. And, you know, I've prayed about this. Like I remember sitting all by myself. It's a big church. There's so many people that go there and you see these older couples and they're married and sitting together. And, you know, I was like, one, one day I'm going to be that person, you know, and things are going to happen. So it was just a mist of learning patience and, you know, don't just choose anybody to be by my side, choose some but he's special with the same qualities of you. you know? So I think I met my match. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so. I, um, when I was dating, I did the big cool girl persona. Like um, I was very low maintenance. I didn't want to like, I wanted to be cool. I thought that was what I needed. But when it came down to it, that, that's how I ended up with like, I felt um, emotionally unavailable men because I wanted that. And then when I got into the relationship more and then I finally wanted more because the true me wants more than that. I'm not that girl. I put on that because I thought, and once I embraced me, Mm -hmm. I have a husband who supports every darn little thing that I do. All my little quirks, all my me, I love it. And then I get to celebrate him for him. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just like really nice to break out of that. What we feel societal or, you know, if it's from family that we have like these ideas that we have to be a particular way, but we're really truly not. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's supporting each other. I know mine is the guy I like. He decided to go back to college and I support him a hundred percent on that. But it was so funny because he's like somebody who thought I was the professor. And I was like, yeah, I would too. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, if you're just sitting there, they're looking at you and like, and they're all 20 year olds, you know, <laughs> or what was that movie? Um, was that Adam Sandler? I don't know. There was a movie where he was, well, I know an elf, you know, elf was the oldest one in his little elf training and stuff like that. But <laughs> it makes me think of that, you know, What's a big daddy? I I can't remember, but you know, I, those things happen, and I love that he, he he's continuing his education and everything. 
Those are brownie points. Yes. <laughs> I think like one, it's never, we're never too old for anything. Yeah. <laughs> and if you yeah. want to learn, like go do something with that in your life, freaking do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So I love but, that you support you know, that. Do what? I love that you support that. I do. I really do. I'm so excited for him and his journey. So, you know, I'm here with this podcast and I got to make a few changes in my life. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go back to full-time work or what my status is going to be with my photography company, you know, so all these things, I'm just taking time from me right now because that's what needs to happen. You know, it's just like, I'm going to pray about it and see where I end up. But the podcast is always going to be going on and everything. Um, so back to your quote, love that feels right. How do you know? How do you know love that feels right? I'm a, yeah, I think I've mentioned this a couple of times. I'm a big promoter of what your gut feels. Okay, and I yeah. feel if your gut feels good about it, if you're, you know, I have people, you know, that try to, you know, make sure you like recognize some red flags if you have any patterns from past. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not seeing any of that, then it feels the way it's supposed to for you. Mm -hmm. No, we all know. Yeah, but how soon does somebody know? Can it happen? Like, like, you know how they say love at first sight and then, or does it, it's different for everybody. So it might be in the beginning or in the middle or I, you know, just right. depending on them, right? Yeah. You know, um, love at first sight, I will still say is chemistry. Like you can have yeah. a very strong chemistry that can continue to grow. And if you guys, uh, and people that still have that same strong bond can continue to grow and be everything more. And you can use the absolutely. Um, but you still have to get to know each other. Like yeah. I, I personally don't go, you know, I, I love at first sight chemistry at first sight. Absolutely. But you still have to know another human to know if you're going to be yeah. for the future. I remember I used to call it, Oh, it's just a puppy dog love right now. So like that's your puppy and you haven't gotten to a full dog yet. <laughs> so, but they yeah, definitely. I wanted to... for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so um, yeah, for everybody, like my husband and I, to be honest, I, before my husband, I was a very long relationship girl. Of mm -hmm. course, I felt like my relationships didn't quite fit me right, but I would like not, I feel like, no, you have to be together at least six months to a year before you even like, no, my husband and I married on our one year anniversary of meeting. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, definitely around that date. You see, I know I want to give it, you know, if I find that right person a year to know them really well. I don't want to jump too, too fast. Mm -hmm. um, but however, you know, goals for this year have been set to here. And I was like, I want to travel. I want to take my son out to Utah or we're going to Colorado or maybe we're going back to the beach. It seems like we're always going to the beach though. And he, that's his happy place. It's my happy place too. But I go, there's something about the canyons. I got to bring my camera. I got to take pictures of it. Sunset, you know, sunrise, the stars, you know, something. It's like, I want to frame those pictures I take out there. So, um, but yeah, definitely hitting those goal marks and, you know, finding somebody to help, you know, do those things, you know, and oh my gosh, talking more about, you know, bringing in a child to meet somebody, you know, for the first time and you're a single parent, that can be challenging too. Um, so how do you, how do you coach that parent that wants to have them meet a child? I I'm big about like what public places. So it's not like this big pressure of like one-on-one, -on -one, like go play, yeah 
meet my friends, meet my boyfriends, whatever you want to introduce it at the first time. I know mothers do a couple yeah. different ways of having children meet. Um, I do know um, some, and I, I do recommend talking to, no, if you're serious, talking to the child's other half, yeah. they're still involved. You know, I think that's a very fair game to, or, you know, fair thing to do for the other yeah. ones. They can be prepared to when they say, oh, I met mommy's new boyfriend, you know, or, you know, um, yeah. but I do think like a public place, like a park's very easy. So the kids can play and then come back and it's not so, sometimes it can be awkward and like, yeah. You know, I, pay my attention to like, I, it's my child. I want, you know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So are yeah. Those, are those Chuck E. Cheese is still like a thing. <laughs> they, I think they shut one down and out like where I live. And I was like, well, is there any more? I think I saw another one in Plano, but I, I heard some stories and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so I don't know if the stories are true, but you know, I, yeah, right. no. it makes but, me, you know, yeah, yeah. Something that's like, now they have cool. urban air, which is really fun for kids Ooh. and they can run and do the whole basketball trampoline, dive into the foam kind of thing. So yeah. Or I keep thinking painting with a twist is always fun because they're taking their creative side out to show and stuff. So that's really important. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. So yeah. So if somebody were to go on to your website, what are the services that you actually or consultant that you offer? So I do do um one on one coaching. Um, so I do like a three month program. It's called Love Life Essentials, where we do like weekly and we go through like setting down like how to date intentionally, like what we need to do to set it up, how we can go through it, how we can get through some of those first date nerves, red flags, communication, like all those important things to set up that relationship the best, most healthy with that you can and with the connection that you want. Yeah, definitely. So for three months, that's good. I mean, is this something there? They come to you before they meet somebody or are they already in the process with somebody dating? And I've had a combination I've had before, like I'm really ready to find somebody. And then I've had people who are like, I'm trying to date and I'm lost, like help a girl out. <laughs> and so I've done that. Out. And then like some people like, well, I just met somebody and I, I, and we've gone through uh, while they've been dating somebody and ended up like that couple of people that I did it, that, that wasn't their person, but they were able to move on and have that foundation with their continuing gotcha. dating. Actually, my last one, like we got done and a month later, she's been with somebody for four months now and it's looking good. good. Yeah. Good, good, good. I like that. I like hearing the success stories. Those are amazing. So I had um, somebody on my show, I forgot her name, though. She met her husband at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And she was just trying to get her cookies that she loved at the grocery store that were way on the top. And she couldn't reach it. And he just comes over, you need these? And then she, they fell in love and now they're married. And I love that story. And I remember there was one time um, I was a bridal consultant for Macy's and I saw this older couple. They looked maybe in their 80s, but they were still holding hands and walking down the fine china. Oh, look at this. And I was like, now that's love. Oh, hey, that is so sweet. <laughs> but wow. those things that we see and I want people to know that, you know, I think it's a thing now I mean since COVID or even past COVID that the industry is just oh we don't want to get married yet they're kind of going backwards let's get the house let's have a baby then we'll get married and it's just a you know it's sad there's to me it feels like the divorce number is higher than people get married for me here as I see it so I'm kind of curious now. I'm going to write that down and look up those. Uh, yeah. I mean, just being you know? in the industry, I don't see much going on anymore. 
it used to be where I would hear, oh, yes, all these weddings are popping up and we need this vendor and that vendor right away. And it's just, I watch my daughter right now and I love my daughter. Hi. But it is a backwards thing. And, you know, I'm just like, okay, you know, I'm going to learn to accept this, acknowledge what they do and support them the best way I know how. So, you know, things that our parents have taught us, oh, this is how you do it. And it's going to be like this. The new generation, mm -mm. <laughs> that's not the same way as they yeah. see it. So it's actually the Bumble, one of the Bumble 2024 trends is um, that marriage is not the forefront. It's more about finding your person, your connection, yeah. but not necessarily getting married wow so that that tells me a lot you know because how do you curve around the event industry when it's so driven on these weddings and everything so can we create like a new whole party hey we're committed relationship now cheers <laughs> still get your dj and still get a caterer and all that and have a celebration. Yeah. I actually have a couple of friends that have like toyed with that, like of not getting married and, but that they still want to do a celebration like that. So I, yeah. it's quite, um, it, yeah. Cause they still want to celebrate their love. So it'll be interesting to see how this could evolve. And I kind of wonder like also what's coming from this. Are we coming from a lot more families of divorce and they don't want to do the same thing? Or we also know how expensive a wedding can be. Oh Yeah. And we don't want yeah. to throw the money into the weddings right now for marriage or, well, I don't know. We still go to the courthouse, but most people. Yeah. I, I think that's what my daughter is going to do. And she's such a, you know, just close friend and family come out and have a dinner afterwards. That's all we need. And it's like, okay. You know, but being a certified wedding planner, I've always envisioned this huge, beautiful wedding for my daughter and having the DJ, the care, you know, Caterer, florist, you know, photographer, videographer, whatever needed, but it's just a whole new world right now. And I'm like, well, cheaper is better <laughs> for my wallet, but still, you know, great it for sure. Celebrate love. I feel like you know it's important to celebrate love. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was gonna yeah, say <laughs> I think I saw one vendor. It was um Oh, it was a cute little, I don't know what they're called, but the old little style, um, it's like a van that they do the photos and stuff and everything. Oh, like the photo booth? It's a photo booth, but it's the van. Okay. But they also have a minister there to marry you. And it's like, it's a one-stop shop. Get, you know, here and then do the pictures oh. and everything. I was like, that's a cute idea. So, cute. yeah, it's very different. <laughs> I guess that. there's more people who just want to do it a quicker way and everything. So, yeah, definitely. But, you know, I have to ask, do you have a podcast yet or books? No. Out? Not a podcast yet. I think that will be like a future thing. I'm still just like you know, I'm, I'm still getting used to the podcast world. I love it so far. I've been doing it for just a few months, to be honest. So, uh, but eventually I think it's great. Fun. You get to learn what the person does and everything and just be one of one asking these questions. So what about, I get a lot of authors on my show. Do you have a book coming out anytime soon or no? No, I did put out a um, journal for dating journal, okay. like reflective dating um, for your dates and stuff. But an actual book, not yet. Who knows what the future holds. So I are do you like selling the journal? Are you selling it? Yes, I am on Amazon. Nice. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to add that to our store. Okay. So, and that way people can go and find it. So, and mm -hmm. they can get it. So they can watch the podcast and <laughs> pick that up oh, and everything great. so um do it i said okay i can do that <laughs> <laughs> and then um also what is your website my website is infinlylovecoach.com 
right. Okay. So any other advice that you can give the listeners to keep hope alive or tips? You, everybody deserves to find the love that feels right for absolutely. But I um, also love to say date smart and, and with your heart. Smart and from your heart. I love that. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely. Um, that is so awesome. Well, I want to thank you for actually coming on to Keep Hope Alive and sharing all of this information. I, I'm sorry, guys. I have a lot of questions for her. <laughs> so, but definitely, I want to thank our other sponsors too um, that keep hope alive, going, and refresh. I can't believe it. We already made it to season 10. So I'm very out happy, not out, just happy about how things are going and, you know, bringing more people on, more guests, and we have more sponsors coming up. I'm very excited about that as well. So um, as I mentioned, we had lifeonrecord.com as one of our sponsors. That is the interactive guest book for any event. So not only weddings, you can do corporate events. Um, you know, I'm going to throw out a, fun a funeral. Yeah, it's hard for me to say, but that would be a good one, actually. So birthday parties and stuff like that. So check them out on their website. Our next one is milesandsmileseventscom Deborah, her background, she has investigating, but she um, can do handwriting analysis and lipstick readings. And she's 100% accurate. Oh my gosh. I love watching her work. Because people, their mouth will be like, what? She, she got this just from seeing handwriting and lips, you know? So, I mean, she's excellent to have. So check her out as well. Then we have Bryce Harney. And he is a magician. And you can find him at brycemagic.com. Um, but he's traveling all across the United States doing these big events, corporate events and churches and you know, he's amazing at what he does. So, and then we have Ogden Ventures and they, I think it's OgdenVentures.com. They are becoming a sponsor right now. So we are in the process of bringing them on. I know he has um, his background, NFL player. Ooh, I love the football games, but he's retired, but he does public speaking and he has his own podcast too, but you can find them at Ogden. It's O-G-D-E-N Ventures. So, and then we have richmondpunch.net and Richmond graduated from the Julie Arts and he's from Dallas, Texas, but he'll travel to do his events playing the violin. He has done um, in front of a million people and had like two lifetime shows where he got to play and everything, but it's amazing. So he did move to, I believe, Georgia, but he is coming home back to Texas. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then we have TK hair salon. And I'm sorry, I need a drink of water on this one. Okay. So if you are a guy, girl, kid, whatever, and need haircuts, they do that. They do the hair coloring. They do facial if you need the lips, eyebrows done. Um, they also do up to. It's like I was there recently. I did a second chance prom and they got my hair all curled and up really pretty and I was like oh my gosh I love you guys but if you're coming through Plano Texas you got to stop there they are friendly outgoing and it's just amazing so um definitely I wanted to give you guys who listen to our show a brief um update of what's going on in my head so I'm gonna have some all I'm gonna say fun stuff coming into the podcast world. So I'm starting the process of getting that ready. Um, I also want to focus on Valentine's Day right now. So if you have this amazing love story, please write in or call the 833-780-HOPE. Let us know about it. We want to put you on a podcast. So 
But wherever you find those podcasts, you can find Keep Hope Alive. Our website is www.keephopealivepodcast.com. You can find us on all social media links too. So until next time, thank you once again. (laughs) So until next time, we will see you. Mm, love and light. Mm.